going on, Mikey? Hello, Chris. Welcome to Chinatown Gang Stories. How you doing, all right? Good, good. It's been quite a while. Yeah, I haven't seen you, man. How's so, things? Good, good. So yeah, good. let me um, introduce um, myself and you to this channel. Uh, if it's your first time on this channel, hello, my name is Michael Moy, and I'm a retired NYPD uh, detective. I served the NYPD uh, from 1995 to 2021. I served a little over 26 years with the New York City Police Department. Uh, spent nine years as a uniform patrol officer and 17 years as a detective. Uh, how about you? Um, well, pretty much the same. I got on in 94, February 94. I was a cop until 99. I went to Brooklyn South Warrants for a couple of years. After 9-11, I went back to the detective squad in the 70th. I worked in the 6-1. I bounced around. I was in Staten Island, 122. And uh, I'm retired now. You know, it's all good. Ah, so we're both retired. And we have a lot of stories to share with you on this channel. And uh, Chris has a lot of dealings with the uh, Asian underworld after you retired, right? Yes, yes. I, uh, I worked for several years in uh, karaoke's in Brooklyn. Yes, so I would definitely like to hear those stories, what it was like uh, in those days. I believe it was around the 2000. It was definitely after 2000, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. After 2012. After 2012. Yeah. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, changes from how what I remember the karaoke used to be uh, back in those days in the 80s and the 90s because uh, I was a former gang member from uh, 19 1986 up until uh, around 1995. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, so I'm very familiar with um, the uh, activities in the karaoke back in those days and those uh, massage parlors, right? Yes. Are you hearing <laughs> yeah. about those too? Yeah, yeah, that, the, you know, the marijuana, the the counterfeit goods, <laughs> you know. Yes. So, um, yeah, it, you know, I started working inside the, the karaoke, doing a little bouncing work, and, uh, it was a little different than anything I've experienced before, like like in a regular bar. And, uh, you know, at first, um, the first 10 minutes, I thought there was a fight going on every 10 minutes because um, everybody speaks very, very loud. The music's really loud. And I, I was like, holy shit, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> you know, I was a little nervous in the beginning, mm -hmm. you know. But... Uh, it, it wasn't that bad, you know, it wasn't that bad at all. Um, the, it was very lucrative. Uh, I made a lot of tips. Um, it was different. It was different than what I was used to. Um, you know, once in a while I got a little, little hectic. You know, I probably took dozens of knives off people, brass knuckles, uh, tasers. Well, I did a search on this one particular fella. I don't really want to go into it too much because, you know, it was... It was you don't have to mention yeah. anything. Or don't mention the place where you work. Yeah. It was in Chinatown. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, Chinatown. <laughs> yeah. And he had, a, he had a little issue with somebody in the community. And because I don't speak the language, all I know is he walked in the door. I went to search him. I felt what I thought was a gun in his front pocket. He jumped back. Now, at that point, once I'm on you, I, I, I can't let go. You know, I probably should have just let him go. I end up grabbing him. I grab his, his pocket. He pulls back. I go, what do you got in your pocket? He pulls the butt of the gun out. Uh, I grabbed him. He, I ripped it out of his pants pocket. He took off. And uh, it turned out that, you know, he was in a little bit of a mess. You know, he was, uh, he was gambling a couple hours before. He lost some money, and he, he wanted to take care of somebody inside, but, uh, you know, that wasn't happening, <laughs> yeah, you know, and... Uh, Were there a lot of fights uh, in those places? When yeah. get drunk, they get stupid. You know what? You know what? Um, for the most part, compared to um, an American bar, like a regular, with white people, Spanish, black, nowhere near the amount. I mean... But when there was fights, there was fights, you know, there was bar stools being thrown, bottles, you know, usually, you know, it, it, it would start one on one, but then it would go out, you know, it would turn into an all out brawl and, uh, you know, it can get pretty ugly, you know, but 
the difference in the Chinese community too, like I remember having a, a fist fight with a guy uh, not long ago, you know, and uh, you know, he took it, you know, I ended up, you know, I ended up beating the shit out of him. I had no choice whatsoever because I don't know what he was taking, but he, uh, he was all revved up and uh, about two weeks later he came back and he gave me $500 in cash. He goes, here, he peeled off five bills. And I, and I told him, look, I don't hold any resentments, you know, it happens, what are you going to do, it happens, fights happen, you know, you were, a little, you were a little messed up that night, it was four in the morning, <laughs> you know, and things happen, I'm not going to hold a resentment, and, uh, so and that was it, you he know. He you because he felt, okay, he was wrong, he was high on drugs. Yeah, I think his friends told him later on, him look. What an idiot he was acting yeah. like, and then uh, he decided, you know what, yeah. he took care of you. I mean, I remember... Like, I'm, I'm being totally honest. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I had more problems with the people around the community that would try to get into the bar, because for the for the most for the most part, the Asian community wants the Asian community in in the club. You know. Well, you, well the people in the community, like, why would they want to try to get into the bar? Well, they didn't want. What do you call it? Guai Lo? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ken, yeah, the, the yeah. Ken's and Kevin's? Yeah, so the owner pretty much, they were mostly, f they spoke Fujinese, and they're just more comfortable, you know, and a lot of times in the community I was working, this was outside of Chinatown at the time, um, it was a large uh, Hispanic community, and a, a lot of the, the fellas in the community, you know, a lot of these, uh, these Mexican fellas were drinking, they would try to come in the club, and you know it wasn't a cheap club i mean these guys were dropping three four thousand dollars a night you know easy and um what was I, the tip like back then for you uh the tips the tips were pretty good you know like we on, had on an average night what were you make you know what night? i only like on a good weekend oh wow uh well monday and tuesday were the busy nights and uh yeah because the food and these uh, uh, you take the days off on yeah the day. yeah we so would monday fight it's like a friday night saturday night yeah so what what would the tip like be oh uh, uh, the tips were great like on monday and tuesday nights you know we had one fella that would come in he was like 40 years old 45 years old he he would come in with two two girls under his arm he'd, he'd just stop for a minute he'd go in his pocket pull out like 20 grand hit me with a hundred, hit me with the other bouncer for a hundred. And, you know, he was golden. He, he was good for like twice a week. And uh, I could make, on average, I was making sometimes six, seven hundred dollars when the club was new for a six hour period, which is, you know, unheard of. So you made like average hundred dollars cash an hour. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I remember Chinese New Year, you know. Um, you would get the red envelopes. Yeah, I got the red envelopes, you know. And I said, you know what? This is my favorite holiday ever. <laughs> you know, who cares about Christmas? <laughs> I went home with a lot of cash. And I remember the following year. So that you're talking like around 2012. Yeah. Like 10 years yeah. Ago. Yeah. About yeah, 2012. So I remember the, the following year, I made a box and I put it in the uh, vestibule of the club. And one of my friends, he, he wrote in Chinese, happy, happy new year. And uh, I put lights on it. And they got a kick out of it, and <laughs> I killed it. I killed it. The owner wasn't too happy, but you know what? You know, I I didn't. I never forced somebody to give me a tip, unless they did something ridiculous. You know, um, but you know, I had I had one incident. This young kid, he was like 23 years old. He walks out of the club. I'm outside. He walks out. He does a U-turn. He starts urinating on on the face of the building and you know i have a bad temper and you know i was getting i was really really twisted and he goes to go back into the club i go listen you're not coming back in the club you just you just urinated on on, on near right near the front door so he stumbles he gives me a hundred dollar bill i looked at him i go you're now a vip member <laughs> <laughs> you know and, and and that's how it was i mean I mean, it was stressful because you really had had to be alert, you know, mm -hmm. and you know who your maniacs were, you mm -hmm. you know, it was the same guys every week, and you had to be careful. Most yeah. likely, you know, I mean, were you able to identify who was a gangster, who wasn't? You know what? Who to be main, honest, who the main players were? I, I knew who the players were for sure, you know, so because... They were dealing in 
Yeah, everything's everything was a business deal. Like they would come in at first, they weren't comfortable with me until it took years for them to trust me. Mm-hmm. And they would come in, they'd open up their bag, and I swear to God, there was a couple times hundred thousand dollars in their bag, hundred twenty five thousand. I I have no idea, but. You know, I just and wanted to make sure they weren't coming in with a Tech Nine, <laughs> you know. So you, when you're searching them, that's the amount of cash you found on them. Oh yeah, men, women, um, everybody comes in with cash. Everybody, and after a while, you know, you get used to it. You know. Yeah. How about the girls? Uh, what do the girls charge? Uh, the last I remember, they would charge one fifty to uh, to date. To, you know like they dance with the guy it's pretty much like i remember back in those days they used to call them pr girls pr girls pu- oh, public still, relation yeah, girls <laughs> yeah 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 Nowadays, yeah they call them public relation girls yeah so they charge you know? 150 just to um just to, to dance, dance with the drink yeah the, uh, guest. yeah to dance with the guest so it, it was this is in the beginning it was 150 i think when i left it was 175 but now and you're talking about 10 years ago i know the prices oh yeah now, they went up a lot a lot but I'm so just saying like, yeah so she she would hang out with you in your room say you were in room one and then she would go to another room she'd have another, another you know room, another guy another and that, 150 and that's what they do they bounce from room yeah room. yeah if you want to have exclusively you had to pay like five six hundred dollars yeah. you know exactly that's and how it worked back then also but back then they didn't bounce from room to room they stayed with you the whole night yeah just, Late later on, it just turned into, um, I guess you know they found a, w- a better way to make more money. Yeah, they bounce yeah. From room to room because they'll sit with you for like 15, 20 minutes. Exactly. They'll go to the next room, sit with another guest for fifteen, twenty minutes. Yes. And then maybe even a third room. So, mm-hmm. you know, for a night they could make, um, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred with. Oh yeah, guests. yeah. They were walking out sometimes. Out of everybody in the club, like you had the waiters. And that's just sitting with the guests drinking yeah yeah and you're talking about 10 years ago that was the way oh yeah yeah Yeah, they would make it they made very good money and uh you know the waiters made money but you know what like we we all tried to take care of each other you know like uh you know if the waiter had his friends coming in you know i would take care of them like somebody left if somebody walked out of the room and they left a bucket of beer and the waiter had his boys in there. I would take the bucket of beer and bring it in the room, and you know, and give it to them. You know, um, you know, uh, it, it, it was it was a different job. You know, it was you know, I'd get home at five in the morning. You know, the hours were kind of rough, but uh, I, I kind of enjoyed. I enjoyed working there. You know, um, if I had one partner, I was lucky, and you you know, you really had to trust that guy because when shit hit the fan. It was you and him. <laughs> we would put our backs to each other, and we would just, you know, we would just protect each other, you know. But the fights weren't. I mean, when the clubs were new, it depends how high they were, how much, how many drugs they were doing. I remember they were they, they, the one club about 2014, 2015. They were coming in with some shit. It was like in an aluminum packet, and they would put it in the green tea. And we would go in the room, and the kid was on the floor kicking the walls. He was drooling, and uh, that was kind of scary, you know, because you know you you don't want them to to die in the club, and then you know then the cops come, and you know it's a it's a disaster. It attention to the place. Yeah, yeah. Now, but, how many girls typically work in, for example, the club that you uh, worked at? Well, how, the, how big was it? How many? Rooms? The first club I was in was only like twelve rooms. Twelve. Rooms. So maybe you had like ten. And then the second club I was in was like twenty something rooms, so then you would have sometimes you'd have up to twenty girls, twenty two girls. You so know. There, there would be one mama son or two. Oh, sometimes we have three or four. Three mama you know? son. Yeah. Bring, uh, bring the lineup. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. They would come in, line up against the wall, and you know the guys would pick who who they want to hang out with, and uh, and they would do it. I mean, you had you had a, a, an assortment of uh, customers. Some were businessmen that owned bakeries restaurants some were straight up gangsters some were drug dealers you know um i remember one night you know i had a full blown fight with this guy and uh he walked in it was the end of the night i was outside he walked in he walked past me so i just tapped him on the back of the shoulder so he swung with his hand like this and he missed me and i ducked 
and I clipped him. <laughs> you know, I did what I had to do, and uh, you know, it was a it was a big fight, and I threw him through the doors. Supposedly he was going to come back with a gang. He was going to kill me. So um, the next day, I remember coming to work, and the owner told me. Um, he goes, Chris. He goes, that guy. I looked at the video. That guy didn't hit you. I go, of course he hit me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hit him if he didn't hit me. So let's play the video. So he played the video, and I'm looking at it, and you see me touch him on the shoulder, and he turns around like this. He didn't have a closed fist. His hand was open, right? And he went like this. To me, that's an assault. He goes, no, he was just going to smack you. Go, Nobody's going to smack me, William. <laughs> it's, not, it's not happening. And I go, I go, once somebody gets the first shot, and, you know, you could lose that. And, you know, I'm by myself, you know. And he goes, you know, he's a gang member. I go, okay, <laughs> all right. So he goes, he, he, he's saying he's going to come back with guns. He's got guys. I go, William, I brought three extra magazines just in case. He goes, you're going to take them all on? If I have to, I'll try. What am I going to do? You know, what am I, not going to come to work anymore? I go, I'm, I had so many people threaten me in my career. 20 years, I worked in Flatbush. I, 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 I said, look, whatever happens, happens. But... The one thing I didn't like is he ended up letting this customer come back in and for the simple fact, you know, of money, you know, it's all about money, you know, and the guy had, you know, big bread, but, uh, you know, he told me, you know, I want you to apologize. That's not happening, <laughs> you know, because I wasn't wrong. If I was wrong, I would apologize. He goes, I want you to show him face. I go, I'll show him face, but I'm not, I'm not shaking his hand. I'm not, you know, it's not about that, you know. And then I remember two months later, the same guy, he's in a room where I can see through the window and he's in there with his girlfriend and, and I'm watching through the window and he takes a beer bottle and he throws it at his girlfriend. He misses her head by like an inch. So uh, I remember telling the owner, I go, yo, he just, he just went to smash her in the head with a bottle. I go, I'm not, I'm not taking that, bro. I go, either he's out or I'm out. And, uh... You know, it, it, it got a little ugly back then, <laughs> you know. But, you know, all the years I'm doing that, I'm talking, I can count on one hand how many fights I had, you know. And uh, for the most part, you know, my experience in the club, everybody was respectful. I made a lot of friends. Um, after a couple of years of doing it, uh, you know, they, they trusted me. They would come up to me and, you know, hey, Chris, you, you know, you, know you, you want some weed? I go, yeah, all right, I'll have a little weed, I guess. Yeah. And they open up the bag, they got like four or five. I go, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know people like that, you know. And four or five uh, pounds. Yeah, four or five, six, seven pounds, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, and, and you know what? Even though, like, I, I wanted nothing to do with that, it felt nice that they trusted me. <laughs> you know, like, we built, you know, we built trust over the years, you know. Mm -hmm. So nothing happened to you uh, because probably he uh, found out that you were a cop and they didn't do anything to you. You know, they didn't want to bring heat upon themselves. So yeah, it was that, and, and like you know, you know, after three, four years of being retired, the the cop leaves you. You know, like yeah. I'm out ten years, so uh, you know you you have to change your thinking. You're not you're no longer a cop. And, you know, plenty of times I go in the room, their specialty was like, they like this ketamine stuff. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't bust their balls. You know, I, you know, I, I would tell them, you know, hey, Shafia, you know, get a little tip, you know. And, yeah. And, and, and they would hook me up, you know. I'd let them stay 10 minutes later. So I would make up some Chinese words. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah over the, the years, clubs. of course, you have to, <laughs> you know. Well, one thing you got to understand about the Chinese culture is uh, one thing is about face. If you make them lose face, then they're. Oh, they're that's tremendous. Yeah, tremendous. They want to kill you. <laughs> yeah. They would wait years. Sometimes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, just oh, to yeah. get their revenge. Another thing is um, when you tap someone on the shoulder, you know, for my viewers who are Asian, you would know this. Uh, maybe that's why he got uh, offended. Mm hmm. If this guy is a gambler, the last thing you want is anyone to tap you on the shoulders. Mm. Okay, they're very superstitious about that. Okay, tapping him on the shoulders, uh, he probably had the intention of gambling that day, and now that you touch his shoulders, have. I don't know. <laughs> he's like, that's it. I can't gamble because someone touched my shoulders. Yeah. So, those of you 
uh, who are Asian and you're viewing this uh, video right now, you know, make a comment below, okay? So this is one thing you didn't understand about the Asian culture, right? Yeah, like, no. Having someone on the shoulders like this and if you're a gambler, yeah. especially if they're gambling yeah. uh, at the uh, background table. Gambling's you, tremendous. Playing at the Mahjong <laughs> yeah. table, do not tap them on the shoulders. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. They're very superstitious when it comes to the gambling yeah. and uh, and you know what? I mean, it, it's incredible, like, the amount of money they would put up on the bar and nobody, nobody would steal a dollar. They'd put two, three hundred dollars, you know. Um, I, I, I remember, like, when I was in a 6-1, I had uh, one robbery case. It was an Asian fellow. He was in his 60s. He was, like, 68, 69. And uh, he was robbed by uh, four, four male blacks. And they put a one guy put a, a, a knife to his throat, so we ended up catching that one individual. So I remember we had to uh, conduct a lineup, and I thought he understood me, but I don't think he did. I think he was just yesing me now. So we went to the shelter, Atlantic Avenue. We we, we got five fillers, and I, I put together a, a lineup. So he looks at the lineup, and he goes, "Oh." I see you got them all. <laughs> <laughs> right then and there, I was like, oh, my God. It goes out the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Looking back now, we, we all laugh, and, you know, and, you know, yeah. some of those things you just never forget, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know what? For the most part, I worked in the 6-1 only for two years, and uh, the Asian community really, they don't call 911. They don't. They very rarely call us, so if we're called to that end of the precinct, you know, it's usually something really serious, you know. Um, I remember this case I had. It was um, in Chinatown. A Hispanic kid robbed this uh, Chinese kid uh, of his cell phone mm -hmm. and uh, shot him. Wow. And what happened was I was the one who uh, made the arrest, and, you know, after... It, an investigation we found out who he was uh, made the arrest and I processed the whole arrest and uh, you know, placed him in a lineup photo array the whole nine yards and went to um, went to court and he was uh, ultimately convicted and he served several years in prison for that so wow. one then many years later I bumped into this Hispanic kid the same Hispanic kid in the streets Wow. <laughs> wow. While I was uh, working, uh, I was in my suit and tie you know, and uh, in front of the 7-2 uh, precinct. Wow. So he walked up to me, and I'm looking at him like, you know, who is this guy? It was years later. He came up to me. He extended his hand, shook my hand, right? And I'm like, who are you? I don't remember him. He goes, you remember you, you were the one who arrested me for that shooting? They always remember you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't always remember them. Exactly. Yeah, that's scary. And then I said, yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. Right? Wow. And he goes, I want to thank you. I said, for what? For treating me with respect. Right? Wow. For treating me with respect. You know, he says, I turned my life around, but I, I wanted to thank you. You shake your hand. And I said, I'm happy to hear that. Wow, that's great. I'm happy to hear that you're out of trouble, stay out of trouble, and turn your life around because I love these stories. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I, re I had one other Asian uh, victim when I was in the 6 1 also, and um, there was, um, he got robbed in Marine Park, and he, he, um, he was delivering Chinese food, and um, this fella, he was, oh, wow, I think he was like 19 or 20 at the time. He was going on a, a crime binge. He was, he, uh, he ordered the Chinese food to Marine Park. When, when the kid got there, it was disgusting. Um, he cracked a 40-ounce uh, beer bottle open, and he stuck him in the, in the throat with the beer bottle. And uh, he stole the food. He stole his car. He stole his money. Um... To make a long story short, he uh, he robbed several uh, Russian women in the neighborhood. Um, it was it was a very hard case. We we followed him. He robbed a school teacher, 
um, at a Catholic school. She was a teacher there for 42 years, and he, he beat her up really bad. He, he hit her in the eye, her mouth, her teeth came out. And we ended up catching him. And, uh, you know, it's so hard sometimes to keep your, compo your composure. You know, you, you, you know, you feel for these people. And uh, when you're looking at this guy and you know he did it, you had him on video, you know, it's only human to feel like you want to hurt him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. Mm -hmm. So I refused to uh, interview him right away. Mm -hmm. I had my uh, female partner interview him because I knew my temper was just, you know, it was over the top for the, the crimes that he committed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this, the sad part about it is like the victim, you know, he suffered, you know, big time injuries. He was in the hospital for almost a month. Mm -hmm. When he got out, you know, you know, I wanted him to testify and, and he wouldn't go to court. And it's not because of any other reason, but he, he had to make a living. He had to go back to work. And this is what he told me. Uh, I have to pay the bills. I'm going to lose my job. You know, I was already in the hospital for a long time. If I, if I go to court, I'm going to, I'm going to lose my job and I have no way to pay my bills. And, uh, it, it, it was okay because the other, the other victims came forward, but, um, you know, you got to feel for a guy like that. You know, it was terrible. Yeah. And, you know, especially, uh, the amount of years that you put in, uh, for the department and all these things that you see sometimes don't you feel like you get desensitized? I mean the, you do feel for them, but you can't you can't take it home with you because you're gonna be miserable. Yeah Unfortunately, I you, did <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah you and you know, of course problems for me in my, my personal life, you know yeah. That's why you need to learn how to compartmentalize everything and put that aside because the amount of stuff that we see on this job you know, it's a uh, yeah it's so sad yeah but on a good note i want to uh, give a shout out to uh callie uh, hello callie uh today what happened was um she found a wallet and in the wallet was a person's uh credit card driver license and um fourteen hundred dollars in cash wow yeah <laughs> wow yeah. so she called uh, called me up because i had uh my card my business card in there mm -hmm. and she called me up and asked me if i know this person uh, I didn't recognize the name, uh, but then I said, okay, I'll come pick it up and I'll return it to the person. Um, yeah, oh, wow. I'll do, I'll do a little investigation and I'll return it to the person. And then I found out that it was a friend's son. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So that's why he had my business card. Oh, wow. That's Luckily, great. Uh, there was my phone number mm -hmm. in his wallet. So a shout out to Cali. Thank you. Good karma for everybody. That's good. <laughs> so on that note... Um, we're going to continue this conversation another day. All right? Sounds it, good. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you. You too. And we got plenty of stories to share. Oh, too many, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.